Inventory Control. In this episode, we are going to take a look at ways a business can make optimum gains from their orders. For instance, if a business requires a total of 240,000 units per annum, they have the options of ordering 20,000 units 12 times in a year, 40,000 units 6 times in a year, or 60,000 units 4 times within that particular year. All these have different cost implications. The business therefore needs to identify and opt for the best. Cost involved. Now there are three costs a business will incur in its inventory ordering and receiving process. These are the purchase cost, the ordering or the reordering cost, and lastly, the inventory holding cost. Let's now get into their details. We'll start with purchase cost. Now, this is the actual cost of the goods being ordered. In other words, it is the amount of exchange for the goods from its original owners. The annual total cost remains constant, thus the business have no control to minimizing it unless the supplier has a discount policy for large orders. The second cost we are going to discuss is the reorder cost. Now, this is the cost of placing orders and having it delivered. The administrative time and transportation expenses are all examples of a reorder cost. So, if there is a fixed amount payable on each order, then the higher quantity in an order, the fewer the total number of orders in a particular year, leading to a total reduced annual reorder cost. The last cost is the inventory holding cost. This relates to a business storing its goods in inventory. It may include the warehouse cost such as rent, utilities, insurance. It can also include the interest or opportunity cost to manage tied up in the inventory. Now, opportunity costs are investments or deals that money tied up in inventory could have been used for. Now, the higher the quantity per order, the higher the holding cost since more goods will need to be stored and vice versa, meaning the smaller the quantity order, the smaller the annual holding cost. Now, this cost is established by multiplying the average inventory with the holding cost per unit. An average inventory is used because it is assumed that the storage unit is not full half the time of the business's transactional period because goods will have to be moved out to be sold. So once goods are stored, many points in time they have to be moved out to be sold. So the inventory storage unit is always half full. That is the assumption. We move on to economic order quantity. Now, as stated earlier, an entity has many options to ordering its inventory. However, there is a quantity that minimizes the total cost of the inventory. Now, economic order quantity is that quantity that must be ordered to incur the least total inventory cost. Now, one approach to finding economic order quantity is to calculate the total cost for various other quantities and identify the one providing the least cost. Okay, so let's test our understanding. So, Papa Limited's annual demand is 50,000 computers at a unit cost of $30. The ordering cost for each order placed is $20. Holding cost annually is 10% of inventory value. So, we have to calculate the annual inventory cost for the other quantities below that is at 500 computers 800 1000 1250 units okay so moving on to the solution we will have these headings listed here we have the number of units the number of orders the ordering cost the average inventory as explained earlier we have the holding cost then the total inventory cost so we start with the 500 units. The number of orders will be 100. That is the total goods for the year to be ordered, which is the 50,000 divided by the 500. It means that each order has 500 computers coming in. So if they are going to order 50,000 for a year, they're going to place 100 orders. 
the ordering cost will be the cost per order, which is the 20 times the number of orders, which is the 100, giving 2,000. So average inventory, as explained earlier, is the half of the order quantity. So it will be the 500 units divided by 2, giving 250. So when we come to the holding cost, it will be the average inventory of 250 times the holding cost. The holding cost was established as 10% of the inventory value. So the inventory cost was $30. 10% is $30. Multiplied by the average inventory of 250 will give us $750. So when we come to the total inventory, it will be the ordering cost of $2,000 plus the holding cost of $750, giving $2,750. This excludes the purchasing cost. Now when we come to ordering 800 units, the number of orders will be 62.5, that is 50,000 divided by 500. Ordering cost will be the 62.5 times the $20, giving $1,250. Average inventory is 800 divided by 2, giving 400. Holding cost will be 3 times 400, giving $1,200. Total inventory will be $1,250 plus $1,200, giving $2,450. We move on to 1,000 units per order, giving a total annual orders of 50, that is the 50,000 divided by 1,000. Ordering cost will now be 20 times the 50, giving $1,000. Average inventory is 1,000 divided by 2, giving $500. Holding cost is 3 times the 500, giving $1,500. Total inventory now being 2,500. That is the ordering cost of $1,000 plus the holding cost of $1,500. And lastly, the $1,250 units per order. This will lead to a number of orders per annum of $40. That is the $50,000 divided by the $1,250. The ordering cost of 20 times 40 giving $800. Average inventory of the $1,250 divided by 2 giving $625. Holding cost will now be the 625 times 3, which will give an amount of $1,875. Total inventory now will be $2,675 for that order quantity. If you look at the total inventory for these four orders, the least is what we should be opting for. So of this, we are choosing 800 units. It means that at any particular point in time, when the business is ordering, they have to order for 800 units. As said, order quantity is the annual demand of 50,000 divided by the other units. So in the first scenario was 500, 800, 1,000, and 1,250. When we come to the average inventory, the other units divided by two. Then the holding cost is the average inventory multiplied by the holding cost per unit. Okay. Now, a more accurate and time-saving approach to finding the economic order quantity is to use an established formula shown below. So the formula is the square root of the total of 2 times CO times D divided by CH, where the CO is the cost per order, which is fixed. The D is the annual demand. Then the CH is the holding cost per unit. So the formula again is 2 multiplied by the cost per order, multiplied by the annual demand, all divided by the holding cost per unit for the year. Then we find the square root for it. When we test our understanding, we have purpose limited again, whose annual demand for 50,000 computers at a unit cost of $30. The ordering cost for each other place is $20. Holding cost annually is 10% of the inventory value. So we are now to calculate the economic order quantity using the formula. Then we now have to calculate the total inventory cost for this order quantity. Moving straight into the solution, we state the formula again, which is the two times the ordering cost per unit multiplied by the annual demand divided by the holding cost per unit or being square rooted. So the two is fixed. The 
other price or other cost was $20 as per the question. Annual demand was 50000 We divide by the holding cost, which is 10% of the $30 of inventory cost. We move further. The numerator will be $2 million divided by the denominator of 3. So it will be the square root of $666,000. $667, which will now lead to an economic order quantity of 816 units. So anytime it places an order, it has to be for 816 computers. Now, when we come to the second bit of the question, establishing the total inventory cost, the purchase cost for the 50,000 computers at $30 will give $1.5 million. The reorder cost, it will be the 50,000 divided by 816, that will give us the number of orders it should place. Then we multiply by the order cost. That will give an amount of $1,225.49. We come to the holding cost, which is order quantity divided by 2, which will give the average. Then we multiply by 3, which is the holding cost per unit. Order quantity is 816. Divided by 2, giving the average, multiplied by $3, will lead to $1,224. This will give us the total inventory of $1,502,449.49.